everyone and welcome to week three of this course. This week we're going to talk about the fifth dynasty and the sixth dynasty of the Old Kingdom. So let's get started. During this dynasty, the pharaohs continued to build pyramids and pyramid complexes. Most of these fifth dynasty kings are buried at Saqqara or Abu Sir, which are south of modern day Cairo. These pyramids were not built as well as the previous pyramids, so they are not as well preserved. The division of the 4th and 5th dynasties seems to reflect actual change taking place, especially within Egyptian religion and the king's role. Royal devotion tended to shift from royal burials in the 4th dynasty to Ra as a state god in the 5th dynasty. Usakov was the founder of the 5th dynasty. He was probably related to the pharaohs of the 4th dynasty, but it's not exactly clear how. He had at least one daughter, Kamat, and possibly one son named Sahure, who became the next king of the fifth dynasty. There is some speculation that Sahure may actually be Usurkov's brother, but it's not entirely sure. Usurkov only ruled for about seven to eight years, but had many accomplishments throughout his reign. He was able to commission to build several temples and began trade with civilizations in the Aegean. His short reign may be because he was older or elderly when he ascended the throne. His reign also helped start the cult of Ra, who became Egypt's state god. There is evidence that Usurkov may have been a priest of Ra before he ascended the throne. In Abu Sir, Usurkov built a sun temple, which is known as Nekhen Re. This was a mortuary temple for the setting sun. Rites that were performed in this temple concerned Re's function as a creator and as the father of the current pharaoh. This seems to be the first temple ever dedicated to the god Ra. Usakov's successors for the next 80 years also created sun temples. This temple has been heavily destroyed, but it looked like a large mastaba with a mast on top. There were two offering chapels, a courtyard, and an altar. In a later phase of this building, the mast may have been converted to a large obelisk, but this may have been added by a later pharaoh. The temple also had a causeway, which led to a valley temple that had courtyards and several chapels. Usurkov built his pyramid complex in Saqqara, next to Djoser's Step Pyramid. The complex was called Wab Isut Usurkov, which means pure are the places of Usurkov. The pyramid complex is fairly small, and it is not very well preserved. The core of the pyramid was so poorly laid out that when the casing stones were robbed in antiquity, the entire pyramid crumbled. From this point on, all pyramids had substructures underneath the pyramid instead of inside of it. There is a descending passage that leads to a magazine chamber, an antechamber, and a burial chamber. Like previous pyramids, this pyramid was robbed in antiquity, but pieces of black basalt sarcophagus were found in the burial chamber. The mortuary temple is located on the south side of the pyramid, unlike typical pyramid complexes where the mortuary temple is located on the eastern side. This temple was adorned with raised relief of nature scenes. This was a change from the typical pyramid complexes, as no pharaohs had used nature scenes before. There are scenes of hunts in the marshes, with multiple different types of birds, and even a butterfly. These reliefs would have originally been painted in vibrant colors. Next to Usurkov's pyramid complex is the complex of his wife, Neferhatepes. Her complex had a pyramid and a mortuary temple. The substructure of the pyramid was almost identical to that of Usurkov's, but just scaled down. The funerary chamber of her pyramid was actually exposed by tomb robbers, as you can see in this picture. Her mortuary temple had an open courtyard and a chapel. There were also depictions of animals and offering carriers processing towards the shrine of the queen. The next pharaoh of the fifth dynasty was Sahu Re. He was probably the son of Usurkov and ruled for about 12 years. During his reign, there was increased trade with areas of the Levant, which include modern Lebanon, Syria, Israel, Jordan, and Palestine. Through this trade, he may have even established the Egyptian navy. He also led expeditions to the land of Punt, which was a coastal area south of Egypt. Sahara built or started to build a sun temple, but this has yet to been located by archaeologists. There are records of almost every king in this dynasty building a sun temple, but only two have been located by archaeologists, so I'm only going to talk about those. Although Sahu Re's sun temple hasn't been found, he did help construct one of the later phases of Usurkov's sun temple. His pyramid was located in Abu Sir, which became the main location for all the 5th dynasty pyramids. 
These pyramids are typically much smaller than the Fourth Dynasty pyramids we saw last week. Sahare's pyramid was made out of roughly hewn stones that were organized into steps and then covered with the casing stones. This technique was fast and cheaper, but unfortunately, when the casing stones were removed, the pyramid fell into ruin. As you can see, this technique was used throughout the 5th and 6th dynasties, which is why the majority of the pyramids from this period are in ruin. The complex had a mortuary temple, a causeway, and a valley temple, which was set on Abu Sir Lake. The mortuary temple was extensively decorated in fine reliefs that depicted Sahu Rei tending a myrrh tree, Syrian brown bears, and bound prisoners. There are also the earliest depictions of the pharaoh fishing and fowling. Nefer Ir Karer Kakai was the eldest son of Sahu Rei and probably ruled for about 8 to 11 years. Based on contemporary records, he was ascribed as a kind and gentle king. Apparently, an elderly nobleman had once touched the mace of the king during a ceremony. This usually meant that the nobleman would be put to death or banished. But Neferir Karer Kakai pardoned the man and commanded that no action be taken. He also sent doctors to one of his viziers when he was ill, and after the man died, he ordered him an ebony coffin. Neferir Karer also built a pyramid complex at Abu Sir. It was built in three stages. First, they built a six-step pyramid out of rubble. Then they filled in those steps, and finally they enlarged the pyramid while also encasing it and adding masonry. The pyramid is surrounded by smaller pyramids and tombs, which seem to form an architectural unit that is made out of the cemetery of his close family. Although the mortuary temple was completed, the causeway or valley temples were not. The mortuary temple was made out of cheap mud brick and wood, rather than stone, which indicates that it may have been completed after the death of Neferir Kare. The text recorded a lot about the pyramids that archaeologists didn't know, including that the chapel had five statues of the king, one of which was the king portrayed as the god Osiris. The papyri also told archaeologists that there were four mortuary boats buried around the pyramid, one of which has been found. The eldest son of Neferir Kare Kakai was Neferef Re. He was also known as Renefer. No consort of Neferefere was ever known until 2014 when a small mastaba was found near his pyramid. This mastaba was for Kenkaus III, who was most likely a consort of the king as she held the title of king's wife. The image of him on the right is very similar to that of Khafre, which we saw last week. There is a falcon bird sitting behind him, and he is embracing him with his wings. Again, this probably represents the god Horus and indicates that the king is the living version of Horus. Neferef Rey only ruled for a few years, possibly even two, so he was actually succeeded by his brother. Even though he had such a short reign, he did begin a pyramid complex in Abu Sir. It was planned with a square base at the time of his death, but only the lower courses were completed. If it had completed, it would have been larger than both Userkov and Sahu Rey's pyramids. His brother Niuser hastily tried to complete the pyramid by filling the center with poor quality limestone, mortar, and sand. This pretty much gave it the form of a large mastaba rather than a pyramid. The mortuary temple hadn't even been started when he died, but in the days between the king's death and his burial, a small limestone chapel was completed. It had a courtyard with two stone and 24 wooden columns. It is the earliest example of a hypostyle hall in Egypt. A hypostyle hall is a room where the roof is entirely supported by columns. There was also another cache of papyri found in the storage rooms. A lot of the priests at Abu Sir had to live near the temples, which is why the administrative papyri was stored on site. What is especially interesting about Neferef Rey is that fragments of his mummy have possibly been recovered. Fragments of mummy wrappings, cardinage, and human remains were found on the eastern side of the burial chamber of the pyramid. These remains included a left hand, a left foot, and some mummified skin. Because these were found in the same archaeological level as the remains of a pink granite sarcophagus, the human remains are presumed to be that of Neferef Rey. He is one of the few Old Kingdom pharaohs whose mummy has ever been identified. Based on the remains, he seemed to have lived into his early 20s. As I said before, Neferef Rey died early on in his reign, so his brother, Niuser Ini, took to the throne. Niuser was the most prolific builder of this dynasty, as he built three pyramids for himself and his queens. He also completed the building of the pyramids of his father, mother, and brother. 
And to top it all off, he completed the building of the Sun Temple of Userkoth while also building his own Sun Temple. During his 24 to 35 year long reign, Egypt continued to maintain relationships with foreign civilizations. And there also saw a growth in the Egyptian administration. This statue in the middle actually portrays Neuser twice, both as a young man and as an older man. Neuser built another one of the surviving sun temples in Abu Ghurab, which is north of Abu Sir. It was first built in mud brick and then entirely reconstructed in stone, which is probably why it has survived so long. This complex had a main temple and a valley temple with a causeway to connect the two. The main temple had a large rectangular courtyard with an altar in the center. A giant obelisk was constructed on a pedestal to the west of the courtyard. Throughout the temple, there are various fine reliefs, including Neuser completing his Hebsed festival. Neuser's main pyramid was also located in Abu Sir. This allowed for all of his construction efforts to be concentrated in one area, as all of the unfinished pyramids of his family were in the vicinity. Because he wanted his pyramid close to his families, this restricted the size of his pyramid and mortuary temple, so it's quite small. The complex did have all of the features of a typical pyramid complex, including the pyramid, mortuary temple, causeway, and valley temple on Abu Sir Lake. The mortuary temple had a columned courtyard, storage rooms, and chapels for the statues of the king and his family. The causeway is actually that of his father's pyramid that Neuser intercepted to use for his own. The causeway had a roof made out of limestone that was painted blue with golden stars. The valley temple consisted of a portico with eight papyriform columns, black basalt floors, and painted reliefs. The two other pyramids that Neuser built are also in Abu Sir and may have been for his queens or for his brother Neferef Rey. These pyramids are called Lepsius 24 and Lepsius 25. Carl Lepsius was a Prussian archaeologist who made a list of the pyramids of Egypt. Because these pyramids haven't been formally associated with one of the queens of Neuser, they continue to be named after the archaeologists that found them. Pyramid 24 is heavily ruined and was probably only 5 meters tall. It had its own mortuary temple and even a small satellite pyramid. The remains of a young woman between the ages of 21 and 23 were found in the burial chamber, but it's unclear if this was the original owner. Pyramid 25 is actually two tombs that are built next to each other that has been dubbed a double pyramid, although it may have actually represented a double mastaba rather than a pyramid. The eastern tomb has a small offering chamber in the substructure. Fragmentary remains of a young woman and an alabaster statue of a woman were also found in this chamber. Although the western tomb is less preserved, it does seem to have served as the burial place for a woman. Now we're going to skip to the last king of the 5th dynasty, Unus. It is not known if Unus was related to his lesser known predecessor, Jedkare Issi, but they could have easily been father and son. Unus had at least two wives, Nebet and Canute, who were buried in a double mastaba near his pyramid. He most likely had one son, who unfortunately died before his father, which led to the end of this dynasty and a secession crisis. Although we know there was continuing trade with the Levantine coast and Nubia, Unus seemed to rule during a period of economic decline. Unus built his pyramid in North Saqqara, near the pyramids of Djoser and Userkoff. This complex had a pyramid, a cult pyramid, a mortuary temple, a causeway, and a valley temple. The pyramid was the smallest one built for a pharaoh in the Old Kingdom. It was cased in a white Tura limestone, which we've seen throughout the 4th and 5th dynasties, and some of it is still preserved. The entrance of the pyramid leads to an offering chamber, an antechamber, and a burial chamber. A gray wacky sarcophagus was found in the burial chamber, along with the possible human remains of Unus. The most important find in this tomb are the inscriptions on the walls of the chambers. These are called pyramid texts, and they are the oldest corpus of religious texts found in ancient Egypt. These consist of spells that were designed to help the pharaoh get to the afterlife. Now, whenever Egyptologists talk about spells in ancient Egypt, we're not talking about those that are cast by witches and wizards. The Egyptians believed that these spells were more like instructions and well wishes so that the deceased can travel through the afterlife safely. The pyramid texts are an early version of the coffin texts of the Middle Kingdom and the Book of the Dead in the New Kingdom. The causeway also has some very interesting reliefs of famished desert nomads. Originally, this was used as evidence of a local famine or economic depression during the rule of Unus, but similar reliefs were also found in Sahu Rey's pyramid complex. 
they are now understood to represent the generosity of the king to foreign outsiders. As you can see from this picture, some of the causeway has actually been restored, showing the actual roof level. As with last week, I want to mention some non-royal statuary before we end this lecture. First, we're going to talk about Ka'apar, who is commonly known as Sheikh el Baled. He was a scribe and priest from the late 4th dynasty to the early 5th dynasty. Although his rank was not that high, he is most famous for the preserved wooden statue. Wood is an extremely fragile material and usually only survives in very wet environments or very dry environments. This usually makes Egypt a perfect place for wooden artifacts to be preserved, which is why we have so many intact coffins. But wooden artifacts are also in danger of being eaten by termites, so wooden artifacts are still a rare find. This statue is in excellent condition. It is made of sycamore wood with rock crystal eyes framed in copper. This statue was found in Ka'apar's Mastaba, north of the Pyramid of Djoser. It is just another example of naturalism being worked into Egyptian art. Because although he is still in a stiff, striding position, his belly hangs quite low and he has a double chin. Although the statue looks beautiful in its wooden form, it was most likely plastered and then painted. The last person we're going to talk about was a man named Ranefer. He was a high priest of Ptah and Seker in Memphis at the beginning of the 5th dynasty. He was buried in a large mastaba in Saqqara, where these two statues were found. These statues reflect Renefer in two different stages of his life. On the left, he is pictured as a young man, wearing a short kilt and a simple wig. And on the right, he is pictured as an older man, wearing a long kilt and no wig. You can see that both of these statues have large back pillars that hold the figures up. This became very common over time in Egyptian art. In some cases, there are actually inscriptions on the back of this pillar. These statues do bring up an interesting topic of how the Egyptians saw themselves. At least in Renefer's case, he recognized that over time he began to look differently, so he commissioned two separate statues to reflect this change. Next lecture, we're going to talk about the last dynasty of the Old Kingdom and the political weakness that led up to the First Intermediate Period. Thanks, and stay safe.